Pledge of Allegiance. All right. I'm, who am I pledging to? <laughs> I, I don't, I'm in a hotel room, so let me find a flag. There's no flag here. I have, uh, I have one outside. But... I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the to flag. Yeah. Of the United, United States, States of, America. of America and to the, and republic, to the republic for which, for which it, stands, it stands, one nation, one nation under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty, with liberty and, justice and justice for all. Thank you. All righty. Do we have a motion? Has anybody reviewed the minutes? I know I have. Oh. Has anybody else reviewed the minutes? And do we yes. have a motion to approve the minutes or any? So moved. Okay. I anybody approve. have any uh, comments or uh, changes they want to make to the minutes? Nope. Nope. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? I, I make a motion to approve. I'll second. I sh shall we approve by acclamation then? Are there any objections? No. Then approve by acclamation. Thank you. So uh, I, I thought it would be best if we took, um, took a moment for uh, introductions. Hello, Suman. Um, and uh, uh, Alex, what I would love to, if you could do is uh, tell us a little about yourself, your career, how you ended up uh, joining us and what you Briefly, what you hope to uh, accomplish in being a member of the Radnor Township Board of Health, and then what I what I will then ask is um, maybe each of the uh, of the members introduce themselves to Alex with a a brief praise of uh, of of their careers. Alex, the stage is yours. Thank you. Uh, so my name is Alex Yiannopoulos. I am a twenty two year Radnor resident, graduate of Radnor High School. Uh, and uh, my interest in joining the Board of Health is that, uh, especially where we are right now with uh, re beginning to reopen things after COVID, we know that some of the key things with that are going to be schools, large events, restaurants, and uh, senior living facilities. And I have experience working in all of those. I've uh, been a teaching assistant at a charter school in Chester. I have uh, been certified as a uh, serve safe food safety manager for more than six years now and worked in a variety of different restaurants. I've also worked at the Eagles Stadium, uh, doing obviously some very large events there. And I'm now currently working at Beaumont in Bryn Mawr, which is a uh, retirement senior living community uh, right here on the main line. Um, so I uh, was hoping that I would be able to uh, serve my community by offering up my insights into food safety and uh, sort of the, uh, the ground level conditions in some of these various uh, places that we know are going to be key to safely reopening. Um, and I am also a, an extremely proud son of a former chairwoman of the Radnor Board of Health. Oh, hey. <laughs> well, he is. So, so I'll go ahead. And, and I'm also Kathy's neighbor. He <laughs> is. <laughs> Excellent. Well, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, uh, your arrival comes at a time when our uh, our membership has has uh, waned a little bit. So welcome aboard, and uh, we look forward to incorporating your interests and and energy into the uh, the things that we try and do to serve our community. Um, about myself, I uh, am just recently elected chairman after spending last year as vice chairman. Uh, and I've been on the board, I think this is my third year. Could be my fourth. I've, it's probably I've, longer. Probably longer. Since I've been retired for five years, uh, I can't tell. Every day every day is Saturday. Um, and uh, I was a, uh, in my career, I was a, a diabetologist for 40 years, 20 years in academia, 20 years in, um, uh, in industry. Um, and uh, I'm a 17 year Radnor resident and nearly lifelong Delaware Valley resident. Okay. I guess we should just go around the circle on the, on the screen. Who's next, Marie? 
Oh, hi, Alex. Um, I'm Maria. I'm actually um, the health officer for the township and I'm the liaison from the township to the Board of Health. Um, I've been here about four years or so. I'm, I'm from the area, uh, originally from Philly, but I've been living in Lower Marion for the last 10 years. Um, so I'm, I'm really getting to know, you know, the main line pretty well. Um, you know, we license I won't go into a ton of it just to keep it short we license all the pools we license all the restaurants i'm also part of the oem which is our office of emergency management which was just formed during covid thanks to the pandemic um so we deal with a lot of the um you know mitigation stuff for the restaurants restaurants as well as um the building and then you know we'll have a tendency to review some some COVID safety plans um that's it welcome aboard thank you Trisha, you want to go next? Okay. Hi, um, I'm Trisha. I'm one of the student interns. I'm a junior at Radnor High School, and Suman and I were working on a project um, currently about reforming the way mental health education is taught in the health classrooms at Radnor. Thank you. Suman, your turn. Hi, I'm Suman. Um, I'm a senior at Rounder High School, and uh, like Trisha mentioned, our project is centered around mental health. Kathy? Hi, I'm Kathy, the best neighbor you'll ever have. <laughs> <laughs> Currently and still working with Siemens Healthcare uh, on, on the laboratory division, and, and here in sunny downtown Tampa, uh, Tampa working on COVID issues at a quest oh. site. So. Yep. Wow. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Tampa, gotta. Gotta love Tampa. Um, maybe. <laughs> Jane. <laughs> I'm sorry, me? Jane. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Jane Carabasi. Uh, I am a 41 uh, year resident of Radnor Township, originally from New York. Married a guy from the area, so that's why I'm here. <laughs> And uh, my undergraduate degree is in nursing. I have a master's in health education and a doctorate in health education counseling psych. Uh, I am currently very active on uh, the Citizens Corps of Delaware County, uh, mostly involved in COVID testing and now COVID vaccination. Um, and in, later on in the meeting, I'd like to just give a plug to that. And um, my husband and I are both retired and um, just living the good life. Excellent. Lisa? Um, welcome. Uh, my name's Lisa Hamaker Duman. Um, I've been with the Board of Health, I guess at this point, it's just a little over a year. Um, I've lived in Radnor Township for about uh, 12 years, and I'm an endocrinologist, uh, primarily outpatient in uh, King of Prussia and Collegeville, but I round at uh, Einstein Montgomery in Montgomery County. Great. Thank you. So uh, with that, I think we should go ahead and um, uh, pass the microphone back to um, uh, Marie for um, the health officer's report. Sure. Uh, thanks, Dr. Simmons. Um, just not a, a ton to say today uh, under the health portion, just to let you know, DeBruno Brothers um, is now currently licensed, licensed um, as of last week. I believe they are going to open up their doors tomorrow to the public. So it's kind of like right across from the farmer's market. Um, really big place. They're going to have sit down seating. Um, and um, they have they have done a great job uh, through this process, especially with COVID in mind. Um, so they, they actually do open tomorrow because they're, they're grand opening. I think it's Friday, right? No, um, they are having a an event as we speak, um, it's like a it's like a invited you know invite only type of thing. But I believe the 16th was the day that they told us they were going to open to the public. So they might do a grand opening later in the week. Maybe they pushed it back a couple of days, but it's generally very soon. Um, I don't know if you all got a chance to see the um, state just put up put out some new guidance just this afternoon for the restaurants. So um, no, okay. yes. Yeah, so it's, it's not going to be effective until April 4th, um, but they have bumped up all restaurant um, capacity to 75% as long as you self-certify. They brought back bar seating and they also, um, there's no requirement to sell meals 
uh, with alcohol. So you can just, you know, the bars can open and just sell alcohol. Um, a, f a few other things. They talked a little bit about indoor events and outdoor events. Um, I can forward that to you. Um, but, but that does not take effect until April 4th. I was really excited to get that out to the restaurants. Um, so that did go out to our restaurant contact list today. Um, next week we are going to meet with OEM to discuss. Hey Marie, hang on. Is that just for our County or all of the state? Is that a state? PA. All PA. PA. Okay. Thank you. They still are requiring restaurants to self-certify, even though they bumped it up to 75%. If you don't self-certify, you're still back down, um, I think, to, to either 25 or 50. And what does self-certify -certi uh, uh, encompass? So really what that is, is a very, very brief process where they go to, I believe it's like pa.gov, so the state site. Um, and you can just click a link that says certify my restaurant. And basically you're taking a pledge that you're gonna follow all the, the COVID guidance out there. They usually send a, a, a sign that you can put on your window um, just to kind of, they, they brought that out initially right at the reopening of everything to kind of get people back out and start to feel comfortable, you know, going to buy takeout or you know, stop in for a meal. So it's it's just it's really it's really sort of like a pledge that they're doing all they can to keep everybody safe. Um, the um, can I just ask because I know that's what the uh, the state put out, but I know um, that's also still conditional on counties and localities matching what the state's requirements are. Like my understanding of that guidance is that cities and counties can still set lower standards if they want. So do we know uh, how that's going to impact us in Delaware County? So I can tell you uh, only at one time, the county put in stricter guidance. They can put in any, they can put in any kind of stricter guidance. They can't ease it up any. Um, and it was only probably one time during this past year and a half that the County Institute instituted a, a, a little bit more of a stricter um, a stricter guidance. I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but, but it was only once. As of right now, the county has not put out any further restrictions. Um, next week, oh wait, I don't know if I mentioned this. I can't remember where I left off. OEM is <laughs> going to meet next week um to decide on the building protocols so we'll just continue as zoom and unless you hear otherwise um our building is still um, our windows are closed and everything all the services are uh conducted in the in the lobby behind you know um uh plastic so um we'll meet next week to decide um you know how that's going to go beyond uh march 26th um we are continuing to work with the American Red Cross uh, with the blood drives. Um, they've been running about two blood drives a month over at the rack. Um, they've been very successful. Um, we're excited to, to have them in the area for our residents. Um, they just, they just, I guess, booked uh, through June. So they'll continue twice a month uh, through June. Um, we, I usually send those out um, you know, on our social media sites, as well as um, they, they always get posted the week of uh, on our website. Um, one other thing in health, I guess Dr. Capuzzi isn't here. I just want to throw this out here just for you guys to kind of think about it. Um, one thing we were kind of hoping here in health over to over at the township if is if you all would would um, at some point review our uh, our animal ordinance. Um, it's chapter 115. Um, we have, uh, it is, it is a uh, very outdated um, in comparison to, um, you know, the state regulations as far as animal bites. Um, so we just, we're still following it. Um, it can be a little bit um, restrictive at times. Um, and, and, you know, we're coming up on dog bite season, believe it mm -hmm. or not, once the weather breaks and, and everybody's going outside. So, um, you know, I just kind of wanted to put that out there, maybe down the line, if it's something once COVID's, you know, long gone and, and we're heading back to somewhat of normalcy, if we could, you guys wouldn't mind taking a look at, at that and, and see if you want to, you know, give any input or if it's worth a discussion. Well, so, um, 
clearly Dr. Capuzzi would be the, the one with the most formal expertise among the members of the board. This is, uh, I think, the third straight meeting where we haven't really heard from her. Might I suggest that we, you and I, send the request out to Dr. Capuzzi um, uh, to take the lead on that review, Ever, uh, not to suggest that everybody else, if they want to, shouldn't have a look, uh, but, but maybe she would be the lead on the board and we might find out an awful lot about uh, Dr. Capuzzi's uh, ongoing interest in the board. Yep. Does that sound like an approach? Sounds good. Okay. Um, very briefly, a COVID update. I won't get too much into it. I know, especially you, Kathy, you're following the Villanova dashboard. It seems yes. they have corrected <laughs> a little bit of their, or a lot of their uh, their issues earlier in the semester. Um, uh, their, their active cases, daily cases have gone way down. They seem to be right about where they were in the initial fall semester. Um, Radner cases as well seem to be um, holding steady. Um, we were still kind of at the bottom of the county as far as um, uh, case numbers. And then just lastly, I'm not sure if you all are aware, actually, probably, Jane, you are. Um, Ped and Radner uh, across the way has become a vaccine distribution location um, for both the Penn. So they're going to do 50% of the time they're going to they're vaccinate their patients. And then uh, the county is actually using them. Um, as a site for for those that signed up through the county, um, and uh, I think I think that is that is all all I've got to say today. <laughs> so thank you. Um, you uh, kind of folded the the COVID update in perfectly justifiably, but I, I I'd like to editorialize a little bit because I, I have um, a strong concern that we are in the middle of uh, a, a watershed time um, for our township, our county, our state, and our country uh, with regard to the pandemic. Uh, and from a business point of view, obviously everybody wants to open all the businesses wide and get back to normal. Um, if there were no cost to doing that, that would be wonderful. Uh, we've already proven through three cycles in a little, slightly more than a year, that it has not been safe to do that in the last three years. And there are two things going on in the wind uh, that worry me about this cycle. Three things, I should say. Uh, nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition or any other Monty Python fans. Um, but uh, the, the, the things that troubled me about that was, from my perspective, Texas, Mississippi, and other states like that pulled the trigger way too soon. Because if the variants that are afoot behave the same way in this country that they have behaved in Europe, then we will have the same thing going on in this country as we've had in Europe, uh, which is uh, um, uh, Italy's closing down again today, France is closing down, um, they are, uh, UK is closing back down because of the emergence and eruption of some of the, of the variants. Uh, and although uh, we are way ahead of them in two regards, we're, since we had so many cases the first couple go rounds, we have more natural immunity. And uh, on the other side of it, since we have done a dramatically better job than anybody but Israel of, uh, of inoculating people, uh, we have more immunity afoot in, in, uh, in the US and have not had quite as much widespread of 117 or 1124. Uh, but I think it's a very vulnerable time. Furthermore, uh, what I saw on the news over the weekend made me panicky uh, with regard to what is going on in the open and closed spaces in some of the places that have been uh, quick to open. And I go through all of that because I don't think we're out of the woods. If it were me, I would be announcing on April 1st or April 4th, assuming that things didn't go badly over the next couple of weeks that that would be when I would be headed towards um, a, a more aggressive uh, reopening. And that, that speech is a, is a prelude to the question that comes back to you, Marie. If we get to April 4th, and in the two weeks between now and then, we find out that we're paying a price for uh, neighbor and country, neighbor states and issues related to um, the, the variants and the fact that, to be frank, 
although it does seem to be trickling down the, the rapid descent of uh, cases, deaths and hospitalizations that occurred uh, between the end of January and now has does seem to have plateaued. If things turn and go in the wrong direction, how quickly can we pivot back to a, uh, a safer stance? Long question. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where the question was. <laughs> <laughs> I got there. <laughs> so you're saying because the state had decided to open to 75, what you're saying is what happens if the cases go up? Right, so, so if between now and April 4th, Right. We are fortunate enough to, if there's a signal coming and there may not be, and we might have dodged a bullet here, although we didn't dodge a bullet the first three go rounds, and I don't know why we would here. Who knows? If, 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 if we dodge a bullet and things are still safe, hooray, April 4th, great, wonderful. If, however, we get to April 3rd and we realize mm -hmm. that in the intervening two weeks, the behaviors that started last week or the behaviors of the mutants of the virus or the natural history of the epidemic in and of itself have conspired to make things not quite as rosy as they were on the day that the decision was made to get what I consider to be actually pretty aggressive, 75%. It's gonna be hard to tell the difference between 75 and 100, let's be frank, uh, except on those couple yes. of Saturday nights when, when things are piling. Yeah. If that were to happen, how quickly could we pivot to a more rational stance to protect our own community? And I guess the following question is, Marie, what are they basing the going to 75 on vaccine distribution numbers? Like, what are they basing the 75 on? So they are. So okay. they are they are basing that number on, from my understanding, and I can't speak, you know, specifically, um, but they, they are, are taking that in consideration um, and anticipating a large amount of vaccines being distributed consistently over the next two months. With the, with the vaccine that's going to be distributed um, and the case counts where they are, they don't anticipate a large surge similar to one that we had that caused the shutdown. Mm -hmm. um, is my understanding that there, there may be, which is why I think the date they chose, because I think it looks like it leads up right after spring break, um, yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. I'm not an expert, but just based on all the, all the, uh, of research that we've done, you know, that they, they, although there may be some spikes, they don't anticipate that really large um, surge. Um, I can speak on behalf of the township. Um, and with that said, I can tell you that um, the OEM, uh, Katie and I, we stay in very close contact with our restaurants. For the majority of that, the majority of them have stayed true to the guidance, with the exception of those some, like anywhere else. Um, you know, we we are visible. The entire township staff is visible. We're out in the community, so we are we are um, able to maintain our area. Um, I think pretty well. Um, we, large events that that are um, being talked about now that usually take place in the summer or at the end of the summer those folks are already reaching out to us so we're aware of it we certainly don't want to be you know we don't we don't want to be associated with a super spreader so we are we are in contact with with those folks about where the guidance is staying within the guidance how are you going to make sure you're going to stay within the guidance you know and not be a super spreader so so with all that said, we are trying to do, you know, our part within the township, um, you know, but, you know, of course, if, right, if we won't, we won't meet again before that date. So if anybody on the board of health uh, is aware of any information that might make us wish uh, to consider uh, other directions, um, uh, I think that we we should keep our ears to the ground and uh, and and uh, maybe even call a, an, an emergency meeting of the board of health if we think there's something that that we need to do. I would hate to to sit there, see something, and not say something, and and uh, and let things go. So I don't know how to formalize that. I need to think about it a little bit. But I I I think that we we should be keeping a close eye on the parameters that we think we can follow that will tell us. If we don't feel we don't believe that things are going in the right direction, yeah. But, but I mean, the reality is, Dave, we can only make a recommendation to the board of commissioners 
to go to the township and say, here's what we're seeing. You might yeah, want to rethink your restaurants. Well, that's okay. That's okay. true. That, that's uh, well, so, th so that, that's a perfect introduction to my great frustration um, that we haven't yet uh, uh, discussed. And, 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 and I, I think that that's right. And I would, I would keep that in mind as, uh, as, we, um, as we move forward here, because uh, the, the, the levers that we can pull are, are uh, preciously few. But, Correct. But, but if this were to occur, I think that we would be obligated to, to pull whatever levers we might have. Okay. And I'll just I'll just jump in here really quickly. Um, we when Villanova had their spike, everybody was on top of it here. So we are still just so you know, we are continuing here at the township to monitor that daily. We're monitoring. We stay in touch. I think I mentioned to you all before we stay in touch with our um, our nursing homes and uh, congregate settings on a regular basis every two weeks. So if there's any shift in any way in, in those areas, you know, we either OEM or health or the township manager, somebody um, will get wind of it. And, you know, I'll, I'll gladly keep you all, you know, in the loop with that. Great. Marie, do you have any uh, data or a sense of how well those long-term care settings have been vaccinated and kind of what their um, numbers were looking like? So they were, um, you know, I meant to, I, I meant to pull that information, I, and I didn't before the meeting. Um, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so you caught me. <laughs> I can tell you that I can get, I can give you a second to compose yourself. I, can, I know that at the quadrangle there, uh, they they sent out a report. My mother lives there. Uh, um, they're they're eighty seven percent vaccinated there. Yeah, I can tell you where I work is ninety percent. Wow. They were very early on, and right in the very beginning of the distribution, once it rolled out. Um, they were they were working with the state um, to get them done, and and I was surprised. The Quad Dragon's not in Radnor, but um, our our uh, two or three that we have here, they were on top of it. The last time I talked to them, which was a while ago, they were well well into the process. If not, if so, they they've got to be complete right now. Um, I want to throw one other thing into the discussion about restaurants, and this is not to say I certainly agree about uh, that uh, it should, it's definitely something that should be kept an eye on, but just in terms of uh, setting the stage for what's actually going to happen when it goes to 75%, um, that it's, that doesn't necessarily mean we go back to exactly what it was before because we have a lot of restaurants that have shut down in the meantime. We have a lot of restaurants that are going to need to rebuild staff in the meantime. Um, even some uh, dining areas in uh, senior living residential communities are not necessarily going to reopen quite that quickly because even staffing there uh, they've put in new requirements about staff getting vaccinated and tested, um, which, you know, some staff, you know, depending on their personal feelings about getting vaccinated may or may not mean that they need to look at their own staffing. So um, it's certainly going from, you know, where we are now to 75 is going to be a big jump, but I just want to make sure we're clear that it's it's not going to be zero to exactly 75 immediately. There is going to be that sort of, the business concerns are going to create some, you know, slowing of that slope on its own. It won't happen at warp speed as it were. No. And, and correct me if <laughs> correct. I'm wrong, but my understanding is that the table still must be six feet apart, which in a small restaurant will limit the capacity even if they want to go to 75%, they won't be able to. Yeah, it's, it's not a huge yeah. jump. It's really, especially in Radnor, because our places are so small, with the exception of the larger places. But they, with, with and I'll send you to guidance, and I just was giving you some of the, the highlights um, that, that our restaurant's been waiting for, but they still have to wear masks. The mask order is still in effect. Um, they have to still social distance. They still have to follow, you know, any isolation guidelines that that they fall into if they're not vaccinated. So all that general guidance is still in effect. Um, they still can't have large groups at a table. As far as I, if the last I looked at it, um, 
they still can't have you know large groups at tables even at bar they they're they brought back the bar seating but you still have to have six feet apart even at the bar so if your bar holds 12 you know, 12 chairs you're not going to have all 12 chairs no so right correct you, have, you know a group of three who come in i mean you might have uh, you know a total of six people maybe you know seven or eight people at the bar but yes you're right absolutely And they also still have to, some of these places haven't done maintenance in a while because they haven't been open. They still have to comply with all the other health codes that they may need to sort of re, you know, look at their space because of that. And they also still have to have, uh, if they serve liquor, uh, their staff still all have to be ramp certified, which they have to, you know, if they have new staff, that also takes time to do. Um, so there are, those considerations too but i i certainly would agree david with your concerns about the fact that uh, we're not meeting again until then that if something does happen we should be prepared to react quickly but i i would think that the governor has the power to do an automatic shutdown if need be mm -hmm. yeah right but yeah, but we should we should be looking locally. Obviously, he's looking at things statewide, so we should be kind of paying attention to what's going on locally. Exactly. And you'll start to see you're going to start seeing people. Um, our our outdoor dining um, starts started May, March first, and it goes through November thirtieth. Now they did offer um, they put an ordinance together, uh, a resolution. I, I can't remember way back. At, I guess. At, by the, before the fall, um, for those that did not have um, outdoor dining, um, so so that's there. But then there's a whole a whole bunch of restaurants out there that do have outdoor dining. So you're going to start seeing people outside. So you know, just keep that in mind as well. I think I think that the restaurants are, you know, know that that's takeout, and I mean, even the state is still recommending recommending you know carry out takeout as your right. as your first choice. Um, but, but you'll see those restaurants try to utilize that outdoor space as, as well. So, um, and, and our temporary resolution um, was only extended through March 31st. So those restaurants or facilities that were not permitted with outdoor dining, um, you know, we have not heard if they were going to extend that to those people yet. So that's kind of on the horizon as well as whether or not they're going to, you know, allow those restaurants to do that. So if I put a summary of this, it, 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 even if things go well, and we hope they do and assume they go well, um, uh, the, we, we don't really expect just a dramatic whoosh sound on a, April 4th and everything will, will, will open up and, and, and but rather it will, there will be um, some degree of, of, of phasing as, as businesses come in and as we would uh, open for the outdoor as we would have anyway. Uh, and uh, and so, if we remain alert, we should have opportunities to uh, to uh, nudge things in the right direction. Should we need to? Is that fair? A fair summary? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, is uh, anything else on the health officer's report? Yeah. <laughs> okay. The next uh, the next item of business. Uh, I, I put this in there just so that. Um, because we kind of went right up until the end last time and we had uh, uh, visitors and the visitors uh, I thought gave some information that was both very important and because of the timing of things not yet complete I, I wanted to, to uh, make sure we put uh, as an open uh, a discussion for anybody who wanted to, to contribute so Alex for your sake we had a presentation by Dr. Monica Taylor is that right? Yes. I'm not good with names in my old age. My benign anomia is not not benign. Um, and uh, and uh, a colleague of hers. Uh, it, it would seem that uh, having gotten caught short with the pandemic, not having any, in my opinion, and not opinion, my perspective perception, any real formal county health department uh, in Delaware County. Uh, and we have had the good fortune that our neighbors in Chester County have been uh, kind and gracious. Uh, but at, uh, 
as a consequence of forces that were in effect before the pandemic, maybe accelerated by the pandemic, there is now a move afoot to create a Delaware County, um, is it a Board of Health? Is that what we're gonna call it? A yes. Delaware County Board of Health? Yes, that's my yeah. understanding. Uh, yep. And uh, it, I, I couldn't really, uh, I think, uh, uh, Jane, you had a better understanding. Kathy, you had a better understanding of exactly what they were saying with regard to uh, to the current uh, ordinances and, and governance. But it feels like this is going to be a months long process. Uh, it's not clear to me what we will have on the other side, but it, whatever we have on the other side is going to be a whole heck of a lot better than having nothing, which we had uh, up until now. And I just thought I would raise the topic again if there were any uh, concerns, issues, uh, action items, if any people, anybody on the Board of Health here had something that they wanted to raise for the Board of Health that we should be doing or keeping an eye on. We, we left with an agreement uh, with the folks, with our visitors, uh, that uh, uh, sometime towards the uh, middle to end of spring, about uh, a quarter after the first visit, we would uh, bring them back for, for an update mm -hmm. of what's going on. We said about May, David. Yeah. About May, because the board is going to be supposedly developed and started January 2022. That's their timeline. Well, I'm finally on. Hi, Charlie. Good to have you. Hey, Charlie. <laughs> I had no Charlie. I'm going to add you. <laughs> so, so I guess I can ask Marie, what is your role going to be in January? What's our role going to be? In, I mean, that would be my question. Other than sending people to the think tank link and ensuring that there is people involved in the process from our area, which I did, I did refer somebody to, what, what happens in January of 2022 with your role in the township with the County Health Department, Marie, in particular? Um, so they're not, they're not even there yet. So okay. they, from what I heard, um, some, I don't know if we talked about this here in our meeting, but um, when, when they institute a health department, I guess the, the municipalities that did not have one have the option to you know, go in or not go in and be independent. Um, okay. According to the county, only two municipalities have um, decided that some or all of their services, you know, won't be a part of it. But I think the, um, the strategic planner, um, I'm, I'm drawing a total blank on her name. She's, oh, yeah. Nancy. Nancy. Uh, oh, no. Let's look at the minutes. Uh, oh, my gosh. In the minutes. I put her in the minutes. Nope. You just monitored flow. Oh, great score and flow. Yes, Grace, there it is. Grace, that's there it is. Yes. Grace score and score and flow. So she went on to say, although in the beginning, most municipalities jump on um, eventually. Um, my understanding, and to be honest with you, I have not heard any update since Dr. Taylor came last month. Um, usually I hear something by now, but... Um, the the board of health is supposed to be picked if not soon and yes. then once that board of health was picked, they're supposed to do an ad search for a director so once that director is is chosen Marie, you're Marie, broken, you're broken Marie's up frozen up. you're frozen <laughs> hate when that happens Welcome all right find out they are only going to do one to, or two uh, Murray, oh, you're frozen. So we are just yeah. going to continue as usual here at the township. Um, okay. I believe the first program they're supposed to. Oh, you didn't hear anything? No. <laughs> okay. You were frozen. Did you guys hear anything? <laughs> no? You were frozen solid. <laughs> oh, no. All right. I'm going to do the brief revisit. Um, <laughs> We're going to continue on as is right now in Radnor. Okay. Um, come January 22, they should have their health director, Board of Health, and they're going to only start one, probably one or two programs. And oh, the first okay. program is going to be like mom and baby, and that's it. And then, it, then, and then so on all through next year, they'll start to um, put together plans for other programs. So, but so as, as of right now, the township's going to just kind of move forward with how we are right now okay thank you so, so to, to summarize we're, we're there's no new business items for us there's no, nobody else heard anything that they feel we need to do 
uh, and uh, visiting with them again in May is as good a way to go as as we can do right now, and we'll get more updates then. Is that anybody have any any additional? No. All right. Mm -mm. So let the minutes reflect that uh, that no that no new actions and uh, and uh, a meet in uh, a meet in May. Ian, what is happening? <laughs> Yeah, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> he's on mute. See, he's walked away. <laughs> now he's frozen up. Just ask him. <laughs> oh, he came off mute. Oh, he is there. <laughs> My connection's great. <laughs> <laughs> but of course. I'm out of, I'm out of the township building. This might be so. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All right. So, so, um, with regard to the remaining, a uh, uh, remainder of the, uh, of the agenda, um, I think we go, uh, we ask the students uh, for their update now uh, and the, the COVID updates, I think we've pretty much covered off on. And I think in new business, Jane, we can talk about the CCDC uh, if you like. Uh, I don't think we have uh, public participation. So, so uh, why don't we let the students uh, take, the, uh, take the mic and, uh, and update us on their project. Yeah, um, I just have a short presentation to share. Sure. Um, so I just wanted to talk about um, kind of something that one of the board members brought up at our first introduction of this topic. Um, just like how mental health education is talked about as something that's very important and that should be taught in schools, but there's a dearth of information on, on how it should actually be, be conveyed effectively. Um, so I just included a screenshot of, if you look up on Google Scholar, um, just this very topic, like a lot of things come up about um, supporting children's mental health, promoting it, um, like how to approach it and um, integrate it. Um, integrate mental health and education together. But then this information isn't really specialized into how it should be carried out. And um, these are just excerpts taken from some of these articles, which again, um, talk about how um, this education is important, um, providing young people with basic knowledge and skills for protecting mental health and understanding mental health problems is increasingly important in light of reach research showing that prognosis for severe mental illness is improved through early detection and intervention. And um, another quote, education and mental health integration will be advanced when the goal of mental health includes effective schooling and the goal of effective schools includes the healthy functioning of students. Um, so you can see that um, it's widely accepted that mental health awareness in schools is important. And just at Radnor, um, we touched on this before in November, but how the ninth grade health and wellness class um, includes mental health topics as part of their curriculum. Um, responsible decision-making, peer pressure, resistance skills, emotions, and conflict resolution. And then in 10th grade, um, just a continuation of those topics. Um, but the curriculum kind of, and course description kind of remains vague and um, it's not really specified. And so, I just wanted to show that Radner clearly takes mental health awareness seriously. Um, it has, at the high school, we have the Speak Up Club where parents and high schoolers can talk about mental health problems in um, a less formal setting. And that's where um, they can feel comfortable talking about serious topics. And then Radner also has had many mental health assemblies and speakers in the past um, to show individuals talking about their individual experiences with mental illness. And then there's also um, ASK, the Alliance for Safe Kids for Parents. And one of their most recent meetings was 
con continuing the conversation, addressing stress, depression, and anxiety during the pandemic. So clearly, um, all these things show that Radner takes um, mental health education seriously, but actually, like in the health classroom, um, I don't think those same ideas completely carry over, and that's what I wanted to show. So basically what you're saying is that the items, the topics, the, the, the needs are identified, but it's translating them into the classroom, the how-to of uh, teaching or learning about mental health is what the issue is. Is that correct? So how do you think you will uh, be able to tackle that? I think... Um... So we had our survey that you reviewed and we, you saw. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to update you on that. So I sent a follow-up email to the director of teaching and learning and still haven't gotten a response, but I'm a junior. So when I go back to school on Monday, I think I can talk to them in person um, um, and get a response for, for that. Yeah, I know you guys are at a, a really big disadvantage because you can't track down the teachers and the administrators personally. And sometimes, you know, your emails just get lost with mm -hmm. all the other, you know, hundreds of emails. So I give you a lot of credit for hanging in there and really trying because this has not been an easy task given the fact that you, you have not been able to go to school until now next week. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so um, we'll hear a further update from you at our next meeting. Is that, and, and you're starting very, almost feels like grudgingly from, from the, uh, the sounds of the responses that you get, you're starting to get some responses and you're starting to be able to move the thing forward. And um, uh, uh, Jane and, and, and Lisa are helping you to, uh, Rescope as as the time goes by. Is that an accurate summary? Mm -hmm. Yes. Anything? Will you guys be able to present something in June? Do you think you'll have time? Um, I think if we're able to follow through with the survey, I think that'll be huge for our project. Okay. Um, May I ask? Were you did were you able to get approval to do the survey because i know in the past that's been a real oh, yeah it's just like i talked to our principal and she and the his name's dr beck told the director of learning and teaching and he just has to approve it to distribute it to students um so that's the issue okay And you're getting trying to get that next week when you're in person and you can track down people yeah. live. Got it. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Anything else on that topic? Uh, can I just ask, since I wasn't here for the last one, I know uh, our students said they sent out a copy of the survey to the board before. Can someone send me a copy of that? Be interested to see it. We definitely, and um, uh, Marie usually has anything that is uh, durable. Marie has um, uh, archives so that uh, she can usually pull that. Through. Um, Suman and Trish, did you send? Did you send me the um, the survey? Um, I'm not sure, but I could send it to you right after this meeting. Okay, I'll send it to you when I get it, Alex. Thank you. Yeah, I th I'd like to get an, your updated one too, please. Okay, so uh, if we move on, um, uh, we've pretty much uh, beat up the COVID update and, uh, and I'd like to move to new business. And, and the first topic, I, I think I promised the, the microphone to you, Jane, on, um, on CCDC. 
Yeah, this is the citizens. Can you hear me? Because my mm -hmm. okay, this is the citizen core of Delaware County. Uh, they started a massive volunteer program a year ago at this time uh, to help with the COVID crisis. At that point, we had no idea where we were going with it, whether we were going to have to create hospitals in, in gymnasiums or exactly uh, the direction it was going. But um, they had the foresight to create a huge volunteer program. And at this time we have over 2000 uh, volunteers, some of which are uh, very active, some are not that active. But uh, we have a core group of medical volunteers and non-medical volunteers. Uh, initially, we were doing a lot of COVID testing, but now that's moved to doing COVID uh, vaccinations. Uh, at this point, we have several uh, what they call VPODs, vaccination points of, oh my gosh, I'm drawing a quick like dispensing. Um, and Marie had mentioned Penn Medicine at Radnor is one of them, which uh, my husband and I have worked at, and obviously it's very nice for us because it's close to home. And uh, that incorporates both Penn Medicine um, staff as well as Delaware County volunteers. Uh, we've also staffed Yaden, Aston. Uh, we're starting at Springfield Hospital. We've been to Chester. And just recently, we vaccinated on Sunday over 1,400 uh, people at um, Upper Derby High School. So we, every so often we will open up these V pods in places that um, just are temporary. Uh, but we, we are sticking with uh, Penn Medicine and also with uh, Aston and um, Yaden. Uh, I do wanna plug in um, that if anybody is interested in volunteering and you can volunteer as little as four hours a, a week to you know every other week, but uh, really trying to get as many volunteers as possible. Uh, you just go on to uh, Citizen Corps of Delaware County's website and they'll be on the right hand side, uh, a place to volunteer and you just fo follow all the prompts and uh, you have to ultimately sign on to serve PA. This way uh, the state knows who is volunteering uh, for the county and what their credentials are. But uh, it's a great program and we just feel like uh, we're really doing a lot of good for our community. So I, I, I heartily endorse CCDC, the good they're doing for the community. I, I have to be a little bit double-edged in that endorsement, sure. however. Um, uh, it is, it has taken me forever to plow through the process. They, you don't start out knowing that you have to go to serve PA. Serve PA is, so serve PA, is, as, as Jane said, is the state database for healthcare volunteerism. Right. And if you're going, and I don't know if this is true if you're going on as a non-medical, but if you're going on as a medical uh, licensed individual, uh, you have to go through the serve PA, which I found incredibly kludgy and difficult. It is. In, it in is. both sites, there are things that they don't tell you, like there is a handbook and there's a question about what's in the handbook. I, uh, I, can, I can give you the answer. <laughs> I, I got the answer already. But, <laughs> but if you really want volunteers, you shouldn't put up barriers to the no, volunteers. No, and, and and I, I'm, I'm 10 days into the process and I am still not able to sign on to any of the actual V pods or other volunteer activities that I would. So I'm just, I, I would endorse everybody should do it if they can and they have the bandwidth, but be prepared for a little bit of a marathon to get to the point where you yeah. can actually volunteer for missions. Right, and they just started a new program and it's, it's called something like Ready Something that they just initiated yeah. yesterday. <laughs> That's another one, yes. Indeed. You know, so hopefully it will get easier to uh, have people sign up to volunteer. And I, I, I'm sorry that you've had such a difficult- well, You don't have to apologize. It, it, just, it, it is what it is. Yeah. It is what it is, but may, maybe it could be better. Are you, are you other than being a volunteer for CCDC, are you uh, a, 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 in, in some other way, a, a member organizer, officer or something? No, because I, I chose not to. <laughs> I just, I, I just want to go volunteer, do my hours and go home. <laughs> I mean, my concern is that 
um, you know, Pennsylvania hasn't been real great at vaccine distribution of doses. Let's say we get some and then we don't have the volunteers to give them out. We have a whole nother problem because people yeah. are waiting. People are frustrated. Mm -hmm. They're going to other counties that they can if they're 1A to get them because I don't know what is going on with the state of Pennsylvania, but they're doing a lot better in Alaska with the dog sleds and I can't figure it out. Well, Delaware County um, a few weeks ago was not giving much vaccine correct we real correct issue with that actually we had to cancel a whole week of vaccination because we, we did we didn't get it and um i know it was similar with montgomery yep. county and chester county and um now we have much more vaccine and if we don't have enough medical volunteers they do hire uh nurses to come in oh they do okay yeah. all right yeah. so there is a back there's a back yes. door to get yes. help there i mean I, I know they would love all these volunteers but it's taken david 10 days and yeah, he's not even on a list yet. Right. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. We're going to run out of people. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I actually, I, I, on the positive side, I, I am impressed with the, uh, the turnout, uh, the, the, the community desire, the involvement. I actually think that, that it has the, the, the website has the potential to be a great, uh, a great tool. And just as you say, Kathy, I, I, you know, the, the, for the last uh, uh, many weeks, we've been in a um, a uh, triaging and rationing of, of vaccines, mm -hmm. but fairly soon that that equation will change, and 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 hopefully we'll have we'll have the uh, the the person power uh, enrolled to uh, to uh, roll out and, and keep ourselves safe and to keep up with the expect, expected inoculations that will allow us to open on April 4th. Right, I because I think the governor is suggesting that all J&J &J vaccines will go to teachers. Well, I don't even know how they're gonna figure that out, how to get well, the teachers in that loop. Uh, I know that a uh, Radnor Township teacher did get the J&J, &J okay. I think, as mm -hmm. I think yesterday. I think yeah. well was scheduled today to have their teachers because the kids were off so the teachers could come in and get J&J. &J. Oh, good. Okay. So they have a plan in place to get the teachers done because that's key to I, opening I schools. Some red teachers back to work. already have though, right? Have the vaccination? Yes. I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, quick question for you, Marie. Should there be public participation while we're still in Zoom mode, how would that work? Would they have to tell us beforehand that they would, uh, uh, the, the members of the public would like to join? How would we get public participation? So there, and Ian could probably describe this way better than me, but th it's all set up on the website. So under each, um, under, um, it's a live, live YouTube, right Ian? And then underneath it gives you a link that you can click on and then you have to register to just kind of put your name in and then and then you can comment is that is that how it works that's correct yeah so um if you look at your well participants done. list it'll they'll show up as attendees that's members of the public we currently don't have any um members of the public on the meeting right now well if that being the case then i i can request a uh, move to adjourn and we can have a timely adjournment because there is no public participation and we have no other items on our agenda is there a moment a move to a motion to adjourn sure i i i'll second all right <laughs> and with that the meeting is adjourned and we will uh reconvene on april 19th uh hopefully we won't have any need to but with, uh, with the things that we should keep in mind uh, based on our earlier discussion. Welcome, Alex. Uh, Welcome. I'm looking forward to, to the new talent and energy you'll bring forward. And, and thanks, everybody. And, uh, and be well. Stay Take safe. Care. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.